warming because of also our sins, based upon what the Prophet said, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so, now, now let me go to the next thing. So, something interesting I want to share with you. Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, he saw a very disturbing image. He was the king of kings. When, when somebody would come into his entourage, like some delegate, like Saba came. When Saba came, she saw all the animals lined up, all the jinns lined up, all the humans lined up, and she has to pass by all of this to get to Sulaiman. You can imagine, if you're like a queen, of a country and you have to pass by all the animals lined up for this king, right? And all the jinns lined up for this king and all the human beings lined up for this king. You'd be quite impressed. That Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, he had an image. He saw an image. And the image was this. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ Sulaiman. We gave fitna. We tested Sulaiman. <coughs> We saw, Suleiman saw on his throne, throne, his kursi, the kursi of Suleiman, the king. He saw on his throne, he saw that there is a body, jasadan. Now jasad in the Quran is used for something that is a body but has no soul, no spirit. Like for example, I'll give you some examples quickly. Uh, one example I'll give you is Fir'aun. Nunajika bi badnika. Allah says, we will save you in your badan. Badan is a body that has a soul. But when, you know, Samiri made that uh, cow that made that noise, that's called jasad in Quran. It's just, just dead body. It's, it's not real. It's just the outer form. In another ayah, Allah says, Tu'ajibuka ajisamahum. They become... They delight you by their, uh, their jism, by their exterior. Then you'd say, well, but they're still living. Then it becomes clear in the next part of the ayah. They're like trees that have the outer bark, but there's nothing inside. There's no root inside. They just have the outside. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, Sulaiman sees this vision where he sees a jasad sitting in his throne. And it really, really bothered him. And so this is what he said. قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي He's going to do dua. Before you start your dua, ask for forgiveness. قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي Allah, forgive me, forgive me. وَحَبْ <coughs> لِي And give me a kingship because of what he saw. He said, give me the kingship. لا ينبغي لي أحد من بعدي that no one else can have after me. And that was after Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, his kingship, meaning starting from his children, just got divided and divided and divided. Why did Sulaiman pray to Allah that don't give anyone the kingship you gave me? Because of what he saw disturbed him so much then he said, I don't want anyone sitting in my La Yambari Lim Ba'di. After me, no one should have my chair. What did he see? He saw that thing that the Prophet warned us from over the Prophet. The companions of the Prophet said the Prophet would warn us from the Jal so much we would be fearful sitting where we are sitting. And so what he saw was that jism of the Dijal that is going to pretend to be a king over the people in the future and he will be deceiving the people because he won't be a true messiah. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is how will you see the truth of this if your heart still loves wealth? Because he's going to have all the wealth. The Prophet, if you read the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam. The, the Jal will have all the resources. The Prophet said the resources, Zuhrif al Ard, that I was just talking about, the resources will follow the Jal like the way uh, uh, honey follows the, uh, the, the honeybee. The Prophet said, the Jal will have access to a mountain of bread. 
And the believers will be given a choice. You want Jannah or you want meeting in this world? You want Jannah? Zuyinat. It looks so beautiful. And this, what you, you're you going to live outside in the cave? That looks pretty tough. That looks pretty bad. You're going to have to make a choice. Your children, your grandchildren will one day have to make a choice. Are they going to go live the city life? The beautiful life? Zuyinat. And live under that system? Or are they going to be with the Muslims living in their own sustainable places and lands. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now for this, what I was saying is, you have two things. You have to purify your heart from love of wealth, and you have to have knowledge that is able to see through the reality of things. And so over here I want to mention, one of the main themes of this Rustul Kahf is, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَعَنَا الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا Whatever we put on this earth is zina. Especially for who? <clears throat> for the people that live in that economy that comes after the agrarian economy that I talked about in the beginning. Right? <laughs> when the earth brings out its resources and makes everything beautiful. The iron and the ore and the patrol and everything comes out makes everything so beautiful. Everything you use the Christmas lights tree for to make everything beautiful, it comes out of the earth. So we don't have as Muslims time to fight with each other or bicker with each other or be rude to each other. Because we have a major task before us. Muslims in America have to be ready for that time. <coughs> the masjids have to be ready for that time. We made this dunya a zina. It's just a dazzling exterior. Iqbal called this, Iqbal called it the dazzling exterior. The exterior is beautiful. But in, you know, the internal is a different story. But the, it's just very charming on the outside. And it keeps you from making the right choices. So you have to ask yourself, how much do you love this dunya? And how much are you ready to protect yourself and your family outside the grid, outside the system? Because you'll need to have something outside the grid. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another ayah, Allah says, let me actually do the second khutbah and then I'll do this. Inshallah, I'll say this, astaghfirullah wa lakum. Astaghfirullah wa lakum wa nisaghi wa nisaghi wa nisaghi wa الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. And when you are dazzled by the dazzling glitter of the world, you forget to say Inshallah. And when you say I will do something, and you know nowadays we even use Inshallah all wrong. Okay, uh, I'll give you, for example, we say, you know, I say, is your name Muhammad? Yes, my name is Muhammad, inshallah. <laughs> you know, this is not how inshallah is used. If you wish to do something and you haven't planned it, you don't need to say inshallah. I wish to go to Mecca one day. That when you have planned something, then you say, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُولُوا إِنِّي فَاعِلُ ذَلِكَ غَدَى إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ Don't say, I, when you have something, inni fa'ilun that I will do this. You have already planned it. Now say inshallah. You can say it in the other places too. But where you have to say it is here. You have to say inshallah when you already planned something. And not with the intention that, oh, Allah will not, not like as an excuse, oh, if I don't do it, it's an excuse for your boss. Inshallah, I'll do it. And then you don't do it. Not like that. Or you say to your wife, I'll do this. Inshallah, I'll do it. But you have no intention of doing it. No, when you have a plan. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ was a great planner. When he went to the Battle of Uhud, he wore two coat armors. Not one, two. I, I, you know those things you wear for war? Two iron coat mails the Prophet wore for the Battle of Uhud. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, when you say insha'Allah, it means one thing that we don't consider is that insha'Allah is not only for Allah will make this happen. Because Allah can make something better happen. If you read Surah Kahf, inshallah is not used only in that sense. 
Because Allah can make something better happen than what you're planning. Because nothing happens the way you plan it. Right? Nothing happens the way what? You plan and nothing happens. But if you say, inshallah, maybe your plan will turn out to be a better plan. I'll give you an example. How did the Ashab al-Kahf know and end up in that cave? How did they end up in that cave? They didn't know which They just came to their minds together. They just decided they did shura. They went to that place. They ended up in the best place where Allah can put them to sleep, where the sun will not bother them too much, which is the Quran talks about that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can put a dog there to protect them. And all that can happen because inshallah, when you say inshallah, it's not just that Allah will make happen what you want, but Allah will inshallah do something extra and make it a better ta'wil, a better goal for something better than what you were planning. And that trust, one of the signs that our trust in Allah is gone, is that our inshallah is more about, okay, maybe if Allah allows it, you know, kind of like not really believing in Allah. And not believing that when I say inshallah, something better than what I'm planning may happen. I have one minute. وَلَا تَقُولُ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَائِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدَى إِنشَاءَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Except you say, inshaAllah. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيدٌ If you want to be of those people that are saved from the deception of the, of the beauty and the glitter that the Dajjal will throw at the people, when everyone will be helpless, when the world will be helpless, and there will be no currency to speak of, at that time when the Dajjal throws its, you know, treasures, <coughs> at that time, for you to be able to say, no, your Iman is going to have to be very strong. And then Allah says, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيدٌ Remember Allah when you forget. أَسَاءَ أَنْ يَحْدِيَنِّي رَبِّي أَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا You see? This is the point. You say, inshallah, and the result is, listen, the, uh, the Arab brothers. You say, inshallah, and what is the result? أَسَاءَ أَنْ يَحْدِيَنِّي رَبِّي أَقْرَبَ أَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا Maybe Allah will take me to a more mature decision than the one I'm making. A more better decision than I'm making. And so, the decision to delay the revelation to the Prophet ﷺ, what happened because he didn't say, inshaAllah ta'ala. But if you say inshaAllah, you may get what you wanted. But you say inshaAllah, not you're going to get what you want, but Allah can give you something better than what you want. This is what these ayat are saying. So now you know what the meaning of insha'Allah is. Insha'Allah, Allah will do that for me, which is even better than maybe what I'm thinking. This is what it means. We have been using this as a like, kind of like, a, whatever I'm planning, insha'Allah will happen. Like as if Allah is tied and limited to your decisions. No, Allah, can, I will say, I want to do such and such thing. Insha'Allah, I plan to do it. But insha'Allah means even if something better can happen than this. So when you say inshallah, say it with this intention that I have this plan, Allah can make this happen, or something even something even better can happen. Now your inshallah has more iman in it. Inshallah, let's end here. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adhab al nar. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa in lam tawfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunana min al khasirin. Allahumma gfil lana wa rhamna. Allahumma gfil lana wa rhamna. Allahumma taj al Quran al Rabiya kulubina wa nura sudurina. Amin. Allahumma amin. Inna Allah yamurkum bil adli wal ihsan wa ita iz al qurba. وينهأ عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم. Let me just uh, inshallah if we uh, we will have one dua at the end. Uh, there's a family member, um, uh, brother, uh, the nephew of Nadim, brother Nadim uncle has passed away. So we'll do a collective dua after salah for that. And uh, inshallah let's pray. اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد وأقيم الصلاة.